Another beautiful day here at 40 degrees latitude south, elevation 2,700 feet in southern Chile. And a somewhat high elevation, very moist, very cool and wet forest community. It's forest over there and it's open over there. It looks more like a heathland over that way. Of uh, Alerce, we got some Pilgerodendron too, both members of the Redwood family. And most impressively right now, this plant, Gunnera tinctoria. Known colloquially as Chilean rhubarb, it's got no relation to rhubarb at all. Just, just you learn the genus name and what's it going to hurt you? It's a, kind of a long, lonely branch on the angiosperm family tree, the Gunnerales. Only two families in that order. Gunneraceae is one of them, and here is Gunnera tinctoria. You can see on that petiole of those giant leaves, it's got those little green prickles. Cyanobacteria that fix nitrogen are housed in the stems. And uh, that's how this plant uh, acquires nitrogen to get so goddamn big, despite it growing on relatively nutrient-poor soil. Nice Phylesia magellanica down there. Order Liliales, family Phylesiaceae. Now, when a leaf is leathery, we can call it coriaceous. That's a word for it, all right? Coriaceous leaves definitely uh, would fit the uh, description of Gunnera. Look at how big this leaf is. This thing is about, I don't know, six and a half feet tall. So this is, it's an herbaceous plant, but uh, they can die back to the rhizome, but you can see how big they get. Look at the texture of those two. Ah, incredible. This genus is all over the world. There's tiny ones about that big that grow on the slopes of uh, volcanoes in New Zealand. There's a couple other ones in South America. Gunnera magellanica is another small one that grows in southern Chile. But Gunnera tinctoria is a beast, and you can see it and standing beneath her. I mean, it's been pissing for the last, not pissing, it's been more of like a drizzle. It's been tinkling for the last hour, and it's completely dry right here because all the moisture just goes right into that leaf and gets channeled off. Got a beautiful red margin to those leaves. And look at all the prickles and the mid veins too. Now here is an inflorescence and it's got a few thousand tiny flowers on it. Those little red things are the ovaries. Those are the fruits. And uh, looks like it's got two bifid stigmas. It's got two little stigma branches coming right off of it. Two stigma branches. That's where pollen will get deposited. Also really cool, you've got this little nest of uh, what are essentially leaves that have been turned into trichomes, leaves that have been turned into this material that I assume, I would imagine, helps it uh, maintain moisture. Because gunner I don't really like drying out. So it probably helps that central stem maintain moisture, protects it from the sun, protects it from drying out. It's very thick, as you can see. It looks like a toupee. It looks like a little toupee. But those are essentially just the uh, low chlorophyll leaves, leaves that don't have a lot of chlorophyll in it. And then there's those little green prickles which uh, house that the Nostoc cyanobacteria that fixes nitrogen for the thing. Incredible genus. Probably pretty old, you know, 50, 60 million years, maybe maybe longer. Mirothamnus is another cool genus in this, uh, in this order that uh, is from Western Africa, from Namibia, and can, can completely dry out, all right? Not the case with Gunnera. Gunnera likes it a little moist. Wonderful forest here. Gunner a tinctor, everybody. That's all I got. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.